Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and it's time to talk a little bit about the price action of XRP. It wasn't that long ago that uh, XRP poked up above 30 cents, but recently it kind of cratered back down. And there's an analyst, I will share with you his individual opinion, who states that, okay, so yeah, there, there was this uh, backwards motion in terms of XRP price action, but he said, okay, so the price went down, but the bulls bought it up. So uh, lots to talk about. Oh, and also there's a separate article that is predicting, here, let me pull it up here. I think it was this one. Here we go. Take a look at this headline from Cointelegraph. Bitcoin mirrors gains of past halvings, suggesting $41,000 price in 2020. Huh. Well, I'll tell you what, I know what I hate, and I don't hate that. Because, look, Bitcoin still leads the market. I don't think it's always going to be like that, but XRP, I believe, will ultimately just follow whatever Bitcoin does. And, uh, you know, not down there, like the second, the minute, the day, the week, you know, whatever, or the month. Uh, but ultimately, it does just zoom out on a chart and you can actually see that. But um, I want to be clear. I am not a financial advisor. I'm not offering financial advice. I don't have a financial background. So you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say, all right, ever. Uh, but I, I do enjoy talking about these these topics here, uh, just as an enthusiastic member of the XRP community, and I like making YouTube videos, so I'm just smashing a couple uh, hobbies together there, basically. Because I'll tell you what, seriously, running this channel, it is just a pleasure, and I am so humbled to have this this opportunity. And I, I never thought I'd have as many subscribers as I do, just to be perfectly honest with you, but I have a blast doing this, I really do. So it's I look forward to, to doing this every, every single day. It's a, it's a labor of love, basically. So anyway... Thank you for, for uh, giving me the opportunity to even do this. But, um, yeah, it's just fun to talk about this stuff. Just want to be super clear so nobody gets the wrong impression about uh, who I am or my background or anything like that. All right, uh, if you would please delicately tap that like button, I'd appreciate it if you do. And also, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. Don't cost nothing, son. Take my free content, damn it. All right, so you got XRP at the time of recording, 27.5 cents. You got Bitcoin at $11,439. Now... Here you can see the 24-hour high for XRP was just a hair over 30 cents and went off a cliff. Now, of course, in terms of short-term price action, like, look, I shared with you that I recently made some rather large purchases of XRP and uh, it had a, ended up having a notable multiplier effect in, uh, in terms of my XRP holdings. And so I, I did that knowing that it was infinitely unlikely that I had bought the bottom. Now, it still hasn't gone below where I bought a bunch of it. It's right around there. But still, I was just like, whatever, this could go to 11 cents. And for me, I just decided, let's give you an idea of like the way I look at this space. It's, 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 I want the exposure, right? And so I'm not going to time markets. I'm never going to um, buy the bottom. I'm never going to be able to, to sell the top. I, that's ideal, but that's why I, I dollar cost averaging along the way. And maybe one day when I do choose to start selling XRP, which I, I'm, gonna, I'm never going to sell all of it, but at some point when things go up, I'm sure I'll want to sell some along the way. I'm not going to do it all at once. I'll just sell a little bit here or there, understanding I'm not going to. So that's why like for me, you might be like, how is it that you are emotionally bulletproof when it comes to this price volatility moon Lambo? And the answer is, I don't care. I, the answer is, I just want the exposure, and I know that humans are going to FOMO, and I know they're going to panic sell, and I'm confident, I could be wrong, but I'm highly confident that XRP will be worth substantially more than it's today. I think at some point it'll have a new all-time high, and I just want the exposure, and I'm not going to beat myself up if it goes back down to like 11 cents just because I bought a ton of it in the, like the, you know, the 25 to 28 cent range, you know? Uh, so what? I don't, I, I functionally don't care. Okay, I just, I don't think it's going to matter. It's going to be a drop in the bucket anyway uh, in the future here. So that's that's how I kind of look. But as far as where this is going here, I, I, I did enjoy reading through this uh, from Cointelegraph. There's a piece written by Rakesh Upadeh, and in these articles he frequently writes about a bunch of different cryptos as he did. We're just going to focus on the part about XRP because, like I say, this is an XRP-centric channel, damn it. I do talk about Bitcoin, though, from time to time, especially when we're talking about price, though, because there's just no getting away. It, like, it's just a, a, whether you like it or not, and I don't. In 2020, XRP just follows the price action of Bitcoin. It just does. But here's what he had to say about XRP slash USD. XRP rallied just above the 29.5 cent level on September 1st. And the bulls tried to resume the up move today, but they encouraged huge selling pressure at 30.3 cents. And this pulled the price... Uh, to 26.2 cents. So that's a fair drop. You can think, it, I know it's just you're talking about a few pennies per XRP, but in terms of percentage decrease, eh, it's something though, right? Not ideal. But uh, the positive sign is that the bulls purchased the dip to the 50-day simple moving average, which is 23, uh, I'm sorry, 26.3 cents uh, again today, which makes this a critical level to watch out for. If the bears sink the price below the support, 
the possibility of a deeper fall to 23 and a half cents increases. Conversely, if the bulls defend the 50 day SMA, the XRP slash USD pair could remain range bound between 26 to 30 cents for a few days. On a uh, close UTC time above 30 cents, a move to 32.6 cents is possible. So you could see it. Look, it's crypto, man. It's just volatile. Uh, so we could see possibly in, in short order uh, back up to over 20, 20, I'm sorry, 32 and a half cents. Wouldn't mind that, but just wherever it goes, like like I was saying, there's a reason I don't emotionally respond. Like, it, it, you know, the closest I get to an emotional response is when there is positive price action, which even over the last few years, even though we've mostly been in a bear market, like, it is exciting to see it go up. Like, it, it is. Like, last year, for example, and it w might have been mid-May or somewhere, I'd have to pull up a chart, but there was a point where it went from 25 cents to over 50 cents in, uh, in a matter of, like, a couple weeks. It's just, it's, it's neat to see, right? I mean, you can, you can appreciate it, I'm sure. If you're listening to this video, I'm willing to bet that you own XRP. So I think you get it. When you've got skin in the game, it, it is neat to see that type of stuff. But uh, as far as when the real parabolic action happens, like, I, I, don't, I don't pretend to know. But to me, it would be super weird if that never happened ever again. Because there is something to this. The crypto asset class isn't going away. And no matter how long it takes, and hopefully it's sooner than later, XRP is functionally being used today. Like, to, to me, I just, as long as there continues to be adoption, I just, I can't imagine a world where we don't see that. It'd just be super weird to me. And that's why, again, like, I say stuff like that. That's why I want to be clear. Like, I'm not offering advice. I'm just sharing with you an opinion as an unprofessional individual, and I genuinely believe it. But who knows? If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's also why I only invest when I'm willing to lose in case I'm wrong, but whatever. All right, so take a look at this, though. Bitcoin mirrors gains of past halving, suggesting $41,000 price in 2020. Huh. Well, let's run through this. You tell me if you think that this is likely or not. I, I'm not sure. There's not much in crypto in terms of price action that really surprises me at this point, though. There really isn't. It's just, it's just wacky stuff. Anyway, a Bitcoin is charting its way directly between the previous two block subsidy halvings that sent its price an order of magnitude higher. In a tweet on September 2nd, Plan B, a creator of the Stock to Flow Bitcoin price models told investors to be patient when it comes to price appreciation. Uh, yeah, I'm going to outpatient anyone else. I love it when people give up and capitulate. <laughs> anyway, uh, despite bouncing near $11,000 support on Wednesday, uh, Bitcoin has performed exactly as expected on monthly time frame since its last halving event in May. Uh, reluctance to break and secure $12,000 of support has characterized price action since uh, but uh, the progress on the monthly chart is plain to see. And here's a quote. Reminder. This is from Plan B. We are still early, only four months after Bitcoin 2020 having nicely between 2012 and 2016 paths. And he writes, but patience is a virtue. An accompanying uh, comparative price index chart showed Bitcoin in 2020 adding gains that are between those of 2012-2016, and as such, BTC slash USD remains firmly within the range of possibility for increasing by an order of magnitude once again. According to Stock to Flow, this should see a price target of $288,000 in the current halving cycle, which ends 2024. See you in four years, guys. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be here. Look, as, as long as uh, XRP continues to exist and as, as long as there's an interest in continuing to talk about this stuff, like, I think I'm always going to be interested. But as long as there's people that want to listen, like, I'm going to be here running this channel. I think it's, it's just a blasty blast here. But um, over the weekend, meanwhile, another chart painted an even more bullish outlook for Bitcoin. If you can believe it, taking May's having as a starting point, data analysis, resources, Ecoinometrics produced a price target for $41,000 for the end of this year. Uh, looking solid, the firm said on Twitter, adding that $100,000 should appear by April 18th, 2021. Well, how about that? It's already September, so a couple more quarters roughly, and uh, it's 100 that Man. I, I'll not be surprised if it hits that. Um, maybe it'll be in that time frame or not, but I will not be surprised if we see Bitcoin at $100,000 one day. Not the least bit. Uh, the, the targets uh, were compiled using average growth after Bitcoin's previous halving, halvings. Uh, now, meanwhile, the short-term changes in network sentiment have not contributed to a change in long-term outlook. Uh, these include a spike in, in outflows from mining pools indicative of selling activity this week. Data from on-chain monitoring resource CryptQuant showed. 
So how about that? I would love to hear like when you see big numbers like this, and it's I don't know. Not there's no way that every prediction ever is going to be right, and even chart analysts, if they generally know what they're doing, the way that they think things are going to go, no one's going to be right 100 percent of the time, but. Still, I get it. You're talking about when you hear anything, whether you're talking about like a $30 XRP, if you're talking about $100,000 Bitcoin, it's just, it's so far removed from current reality. I get it. But my gosh, you, you guys, if you just understand how illiquid these markets are and the reason it's possible to have tremendous multiplier effects as a result, and if you understand that the net inflow of cash required to, the, to get to such outrageous market caps that would accompany this, like if you understand how little money actually has to come into the space, you might think it's not as stupid. You might think that. You might think it's, you might start to get it. And then, so that's when I entered the space in late 2017. I didn't understand that stuff. Like I had the same question of like, so wait, XRP, how's it going to have a multi-trillion dollar market cap? Like, who's, who's throwing that much money? That, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. Generally speaking, if, if, uh, if, you know, if, if you're talking about price appreciation for any asset, I don't care if it's a stock, I don't care if it's a cryptocurrency, whatever your asset is, generally speaking, if it's finding success, people are paying more than the last person, resulting in, in uh, not as much money. So, like, look, what's the market cap for XRP? $13 billion or something like that right now? $12 billion, Whatever. Here. Well, I can pull it up right now. I got the damn life coin watch open right here. Uh, 12.397. Uh, let me tell you that. So, 12, now it just jumped. $12.4 in XRP. Let me tell you, it is not the case that, that, that humans put $12.4 billion into XRP. I don't know what the number is, but it would be a fraction of that. It doesn't take much, and that's how you get these multiplying effects here. So when you see big numbers like this, that's why to me they're not they're not the least bit bit wacky. Um, I still don't think that you need over five thousand cryptocurrencies. I don't suspect that the vast majority of cryptocurrencies in existence today are, are going to be a thing if you fast forward. You know, whether it's a decade or whatever. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just don't think you need a new form of money for every potential business idea. I think a lot of this is just a money grab and it's pure silliness, which is why my investment thesis is that utility matters and will win the day. That is what I firmly believe here. That's it for this video, though. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.